The difference between a smooth opening bag and one that gets stuck has a lot to do with the finish of the chain and the quality of the head. From luxury bags to our everyday products, zippers truly connect our world. But one thing you may not know is that zippers are extremely hard to make, which is why this zipper manufacturer is one of the last ones in America. Zippers were invented in America in the early 1900s, and until about 30 years ago, numerous manufacturers existed in the USA, but were driven out by overseas competitors that were then undercutting them with lower prices. Why is it that this one company and this factory in downtown LA still exists? Let's find out. One thing separating this company is the way they make their luxury line of zippers right here, literally from the ground up. What you guys see in my hand right now is the zipper teeth that get attached to tape. And everything is customized according to the customer's needs. And it all happens right inside of this factory. What we start with is downstairs, we have our tapes that we dye. Depending on the customer specification of the G2, we have the different types of teeth whether they are the uh, nickel finish, the brass finish, all the different finishes that we, we provide. And this machine is what actually runs and assembles the teeth one by one onto the zipper tape. Wow, it's literally putting it one by one. Yeah, so as it comes down the track here, goes into this little crimping part, and it's yeah. gonna crimp it on one by one right It looks here. like a little army of ants, like an exactly. ant hole. Exactly. It's like they're all following this little thing here. And we can adjust the speed to make it faster or slower, but this is just to give you an idea of the basic process of how we do this. Wow, this is really cool. So since we want to take you guys behind the scenes of how a zipper is done A to Z, as we're going to show you guys a really intricate way of how their most complicated zipper gets made. After we made the zipper, we join it together. We kind of inspect all the teeth, make sure it's there. Now this one will actually size it to the customer's length. And how is it doing that? Is it punching it or is So it it'll punch it? the teeth out so you can see how it gaps out that little section there and that will size the teeth based off of whatever size the specification is. So we're going to be making the open-ended zipper? We're going to this. So this one's going to be separ uh, set for a separating zipper. So we'll, we'll follow this through the production and give you an idea of how we do that. So this next process that uh, Ava is going to show us here is what we call a heat seal tape. This is the, what we call the center cord of the zipper. And so this is very flimsy. So we can't put all the other components on there unless we strengthen this up. So you can see here now that little tape comes in and that's what's gonna strengthen that center cord here. So it adds rigidity to that, that piece there. And again, all these processes, regardless of the G2 or our basic zipper, nylon coil zipper, it has a similar assembly process as if we're gonna make a, a separating zipper. That makes sense. So this is what we call a T-punch. And this will actually punch a little area where it looks like a T. So right now this machine is punching what they call a T, a T-punch, right there. And this T-punch allows them to start the next part of the process. So this is our pin and box. This is where those components go when you start the jacket. So you can see the, the pin side and the box side. The pin is what you slide into that box. And you'll see... They're doing it at the same time. I love how all these little components are coming together at a, at a time that... There's not a lot of unity in the world, but there's unity in zippers. You try to zip the world together with the zippers. Zip the world together. <laughs> you can do it. You can, <laughs> yes. You can. Now that the zippers are assembled, the last part of the process is to affix the zipper heads. The G2 zipper line has to be hand done in order to protect the metal finish that makes this a luxury line of zippers. Once the pin box is done, the zippers get individually cut, and the final part of the zipper making process involves affixing the zipper heads by hand. At this part, they also do a quality control test to make sure everything functions as designed. The G2 line of zippers requires that production slow down in order to ensure a quality finish and an artisan feel. Look at this thing. That one probably didn't pass in inspection, but right here what they're doing is essentially looking at the different work orders and making sure that they came out according to the specs that the customer provided. So you guys can see there's different colors here. You got more of the classics. Everything is being bundled up, put into packaging. So whether it's three feet, three inches, or in this case, a hundred inch zipper, this company can really do it all. And right in front of me right here, you guys can see different colors of zippers. So right now you may be wondering, how is it that they create different colored zippers? Let's jump into the science of this and find out. So this old machine here used to be the brain and operation of getting custom colors to match customers' requests. 
This computer back here used to run the operation and it used to run in Windows 1.5. So today they got a little bit different system that's advanced in technology that helps them match custom colors. Using things such as PMS color codes allows them to match the specific customer's request. So as you guys can see right here with this different type of tape, there's a lot of different types of blues. So if you're a customer and you're wondering, hey, I got this nice denim fabric and I also want this white tape to match this denim fabric, the process of dyeing and matching colors is something that this company creates in order to make customers happy all over the world. So let's show you guys how they go about this and show you how colors can really be subjective and how the team here helps you create the colors that you need for your products. In order to get the fabric mesh as a customer request, they use a spectrometer which reads the pigments of the fabric that's inserted inside. This machine takes an image of the fabric that you insert, which is then read by the computer, and you're given a code to create the dye that you need to match. In this example, we have a royal blue fabric. And although the software may provide us with potential matches for this color, it takes a skilled technician to decide on the best mix to match. It's crazy, guys. So even after he gets the formulation from this spectrometer, it just gives him some options. And then he has to go ahead and say, you know what, it looks a little bit more like this one. So again, color really can be subjective. It could really depend on what really matches the eye. So ultimately, it's up for the customer to decide what shade of blue they might like. With these codes, we now go to the next part of the process, which is where the magic of color mixing happens on a small batch before it gets thrown into mass production. Jose would then follow the formula and add the pigments to the bucket. A really cool fact is that it takes 25 pigments to virtually create almost any color that you can imagine. This is an exact science though, and it requires a stable hand and a controlled environment to ensure it meets specifications during production. In order to prepare the zippers for dyeing, the chain needs to be coiled up and secured to these circular metal tubes. So at this area right here, what they're doing is they're spooling up the chain according to the amount, maximum amount that's allowed in order for it to be properly dyed. This machine is counting out the yardage and they have to be aware of the weight in order for the, for the dye to really adhere. Hay que ver qué pasa después de esto. With the zipper coil spooled up and the formulation of the dye on hand, it's time to paint on the fabric. To me, this opened my eyes as to why companies have minimum order quantities for custom production of zipper runs. The time, experience, and equipment needed for this is no joke. So right now what we're doing is loading up the raw materials, the undyed materials, and we're about to put the, the, the special batch that we created for it. Le ponemos los tornillos a cada, a cada rollo. We gotta tighten these rolls up so they're secured for the dyeing process. With this special pipe, Jose ensures the spools are locked and ready to go. And once the die is filled up, the barrel is closed and it's pressurized to work its way into the zippers. On this last machine, we did three rolls at a time, but UCAN Zippers has other tanks that can fill up to 12 rolls at a time, yielding thousands of yards of zippers every single hour. Now let's check out the final product. Le quitamos el tornillo. And these ones that were taken out are completed. And now it's gonna go hang to dry in order for it to be ready to go to the next part of the process. The finished rolls that come after dyeing, if they're approved that the color is right, everything looks good, then they're spooled into this dryer that then essentially irons it out so it becomes a nice flat seam while protecting the coil. Are you enjoying this type of video? Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, share this video with a friend. Without you guys doing that, we wouldn't be able to make content like this. So let's get back into that video. The man sees is always a jokester. But for real, let's get into the process of how they dye the zipper heads in order to match the tape and chain. So we got the color all dyed and ready to go. Now he needs to match the actual zipper heads, the sliders that are gonna go on this tape. Once the paint is mixed, they bring it over to this light box that mimics true daylight to ensure that the colors match the specifications given to them. Like we mentioned before, color matching is truly an art and is subjective between the person mixing the colors and the customer who approves them. Once the paint is properly matched, it is now prepped for the spray gun. Now that the paint is ready, the raw zipper heads are stored inside of this drum that rolls around so the paint is evenly applied to them. So now that the zipper heads are painted, I wanna take you guys next door and show you how the plastic molds are created. Dyeing zipper fabric is one aspect of adding color to a zipper. The next is in dyeing the chain. From the color codes that were approved, they will be adding dye to the plastic pellets, which will melt and create the teeth you see on the zipper. With the pellets now mixed with the pigment, the bag is emptied into the top of this machine, which will then be injected through it. And finally, it will stamp out the required length depending on the specifications. Man, 
Manufacturing zippers from metal chain to these plastic molded ones. Truly does require attention to detail in order to have a great customer experience for the people that are ordering them. This company started with humble beginnings by Paul, who is Milan's father, who bought this business from his partners and then expanded it during the 1980s. He found himself in a difficult situation when most manufacturing left America in the mid-90s due to heavy competition from overseas competitors. But Paul was able to adapt by keeping his customer in mind and allowing them to customize luxury zippers in ways that overseas competitors were not able to. This meant investing into machinery, opening a dye house, and remaining flexible to the needs of businesses in America. So let's find out what the future holds. You know, my father started the business and the idea that he had in mind always was to service people. And as we continue to serve people, I think the, the company kind of sustains itself. So we've been looking at really calculated partnerships that we have with our supply chain. We've been looking at uh, ways to make things a little more efficient in order to better serve our customers. Um, you know, ultimately we, we, we always try to look at different things to make things better here but it comes back to that service core uh, that my father uh, founded here at this company. And as we serve the people, we give them what they need quickly with the quality that they expect from us, they will continue to buy from us and that keeps the business moving forward. Which type of customers do you guys love to do business with or what kind of customers can you service? Now, we were a small business at one point and as we kind of grew, we've seen our customers, you know, kind of the same model with them. They're small businesses and as they grow, we grow as well. So the the kind of customers that we like to deal with are the customers that we have a good, strong relationship with that we can kind of grow with them over the years. So it could be small, it could be big. We've done things for big retailers. We've done things for the government. So we've done small volume, large volume, but ultimately the customers that we have today are the ones that stay with us, that we just have that really good relationship. So as they change their models and change their needs, that we're able to change with them. And that's the kind of relationship that we've had with these customers and those are the customers that we do enjoy working with. So throughout this video we showed you guys how intricate it is to really manufacture zippers. And it becomes clear why this is one of the last places that is doing it like this in America. It's not only a complicated and an intricate manufacturing process, it truly takes passion and a desire to innovate in order to stay in this game as everybody else moves overseas to try to compete on prices. We've personally used this brand for different product lines that we've created and we can personally vouch for the quality and fast turnaround time that they have. So if you're an entrepreneur or a designer that's looking to create products, make sure you guys check out the links down below in order to check out their full selection. Right in front of me right now, you guys can see the different types of finishes that they have on their G2 line, such as the matte look, as well as the custom zipper heads. They could truly create almost anything that you guys need. So if you're a new visitor to this channel, make sure you guys consider subscribing and turning on those post notification bells to be alerted of future video drops. On the next one, we continue to expand on how these zippers and how companies such as this are innovating the cut and sew game. On this channel, our mission is to bring clarity to business and help entrepreneurs build brands that impact the world from the ground up. We'll see you guys in the next one.